what is up YouTube welcome to today's video so I decided I've had enough of all this sports bike nonsense doing wheelies and you know going riding on mountain roads and getting my knee down and being silly so I bought this BMW R1150 RT so from now on I'm just gonna go and join some touring groups and uh, slowly cruise on highways to um, tourist spots and uh, that's all I'm gonna do not really that will never happen so what I'm actually doing is I'm in a place called well where am I I don't know where I am but I'm in Fukui which is a pretty far away place and uh, there's an auction here which is um, USS auction and my mate has bought this but he doesn't have a big license he's only got a 400 cc license so he paid me to go and pick it up for him so got my ass up to Fukui took about three and a half hours now I just picked up this old girl and I've got a something like 250 kilometer journey home something like that so I'll see what this big old girl is like so it's quite interesting I love this electric screen Can you see that how cool is that <laughs> so anyway the first hurdle now is this bike doesn't have a uh, ETC which is the uh, card reader so I've got a card in my back pocket I'm hoping um, that I'll be able to use it otherwise I'm gonna be screwed because this pay booth doesn't accept cash Fucking hell. Hi, I'm ETC. ETC? Yes. 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 あ、そうしましたらこちらのスマートインターと言いまして Fuck's sake. So I'm left to go and find another highway. Yeah, they said um, there's no way of getting on here. You have to go somewhere else. Alright, so, first drama. No way of getting on the highway with a bike because it doesn't have the ETC machine fitted. Yay! It's going to be a long ass day, I can feel it. Wow, it takes a lot of fuel. 16 litres. What was that? My bike only takes 10. So that tell us that it might be a bit thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lamas. Hey, yo. Alright, guys, so fully fueled up now. The old girl took 16 litres and it was already a third full so must be at least a 20 litre tank on this thing so yeah I imagine it's quite a thirsty old girl being a, a 1204 uh, as we just had a look at the bike now I notice it's got brand new tyres on it so I better be a bit careful on the corners still had the little uh, spiky strip things on it 
but yeah so we can't get on that highway that we wanted but there's another highway uh, about 10 minutes away so we'll jump on that and then start the highway journey home but so far it's quite a funny a funny bike it's got speakers here there's a radio built into there but it's been disconnected on this bike don't know how you control it though maybe you have to open that I don't know but yeah it's, it's interesting anyway very torquey engine as you would expect from a a big flat four the suspension is like pogo can you see <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hilarious suspension wise but it seems to uh it's quite maneuverable actually i was surprised you can you know it's for a big old girl it's quite flickable but, uh, yeah anyway so we've got a, a long highway journey ahead of us so i'll check in with you guys when i get on the highway all right guys so i finally got on the highway and the cruising at 120 kilometers now and it feels like i'm walking it's unbelievable like it's so the revs are quite high to be honest it's 4,000 revs in six gear doing 120 kilometers an hour so it's quite quite high geared i, I think but yeah it's uh, it feels like i'm walking it's so smooth and effortless there's not that much poke in top gear actually i was surprised i thought being like a 1200 cc it would just pull and pull and pull but you go like now just under 4,120 if i go full throttle i mean it, it moves but it's only moving at the same speed as that land cruiser <laughs> so that's quite unusual quite um surprising the only thing i've noticed with it that's broken so far is the gear gauge it says three that's supposed to be a six but one of the uh one of the digits the lcd digits is missing and the other weird thing for me anyway is the indicators so that right is on the right side left is on the left side and cancel is, is that one so yeah that's that's the only thing that i've noticed that's strange otherwise it's um very comfortable and you know it's all right <laughs> i thought i'd hate it but it's all right i wouldn't mind uh, you know like going up sticking the wife on the back and going on a a trip you know like a road trip it would be pretty good as long as you don't mind not being able to get your knee down and pull wheelies everywhere but you know if you're just going on a touring holiday this would be actually pretty good i bet i bet these would make good rental bikes it's fairly user friendly considering it's a heavy old girl i don't feel intimidated by it whatsoever so yeah we're doing 140 now again it just feels so so relaxed and slow the screen helps a shitload too hopefully you'll be able to hear the wind change if i lower it hear the difference Whoa. but i can totally feel the difference it's just blowing straight into my chest my jacket's flailing all over the place put it up instantly calm no more wind so yeah it's a very practical bike and it's got the big old side boxes on as you saw from the walk around earlier so it's a very practical practical bike that's not a word you're going to hear me say very often but uh yeah I think I might ask if I can borrow this to do a bit of touring over the winter. These BMWs are so easy to ride that you can just be cruising along on the highway doing it like 80. You just do like a do an Instagram. Let's see, riding live from the bike. Hashtag <laughs> hashtag Live streaming, okay. All right, live from the bike. Share that to Instagram. Ooh. All right. So what else is good about this bike? I mean, you can just ride anywhere with one or no hands. If it had cruise control, you can definitely ride without touching anything for like a long time. Another thing that's weird, I, well, something that's weird is these pads they're awesome when you brake your body moves into this but it doesn't you know like upset your balance or anything so you just jab on the brakes and then you you're in position it's really cool that's an interesting feature but uh, i have to say so far the seat is not comfortable i'm having to uh shuffle myself around a little bit and sit on the back seat for a while stop my ass from going dead oh. 
All right guys, so I just got off the highway, 250-ish kilometers, so not too bad, did it in about three hours. Um, up and down mountains, so you can never get a straight line to make progress, unfortunately, in this country. Everything seems to take forever. But anyway, so I've been running it for a good three hours now and learned quite a few things about it. But in general, I'm confused. I'm confused about what it's actually good at. Now, I'm sure it would be absolutely perfect for long, really, really long trips. You know, stick your wife on the back. You got this, the uh, hard luggage, the, the factory hard luggage. You can fill, fill it full of clothes, uh, strap a tent on, whatever. Go on a massive, you know, thousand mile ride or something. But I reckon you need to stop every 100 miles or so just to let your ass have a break because I've found the seat to be super uncomfortable. Like, um, everything else about the bike is great. Like, my leg position's good. My, you know, my arms. Oh yeah, I took my glove off to use my phone. You know, but it's just the seat that sort of let, lets it down a bit. It's kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, so that's my only gripe about it really. The good things I like about it are the engine is absolutely awesome. It sounds really good. I'm not sure if these are stock exhausts or not, but it sounds good. It does pops and bangs. Yeah, can you hear that? Pops and bangs, it's pretty cool. So I love the character of the boxer engine. Feels real good. And the fact it's got so much torque. Um, it struggles a bit at the top end though, I would say. Like I was doing 160 a lot of the way. But any time I wanted to go faster than that, it felt like it was going to, you know, like it felt like it was hitting a wall. So I don't know if that's this particular bike or all of these in general. But yeah, top speed I was a bit disappointed with. Uh, what I do love is these mirrors are great. The actual, the whole riding position is good. Engine, the sound. Even the suspension feels okay. Didn't like the front brake. Front brake is way too weak and the rear brake is way too strong. Um, but yeah, overall, <coughs> excuse me while I die, overall I wouldn't buy one, definitely like, you know, if I had a huge garage, would I have one in my garage? I wouldn't, because I could see me only using it once or twice a year just to go on a, a camping trip or something, so it would be a waste to have it. So I really wouldn't want to ride it other than those, you know, planned road trips. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend buying one, basically. <laughs> Sorry, BMW. But if you guys are thinking of going on a camping trip, a moto camping trip, or go on a, a long ride somewhere, then I would try and rent a modern version of this. You know, if this had cruise control, which it doesn't, and it had heated grips, which it doesn't, it would be a great motorway cruiser. But this one's pretty old, so it, you know, I wasn't expecting too much. So yeah, that's basically my final thoughts are. It's a good bike to experience, but I wouldn't buy one. If I was given one for free, then yeah, maybe. All right, guys, so end of today's video. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And always, of course, always remember to smash the fuck out of the like button. Goodbye.